I had a really good time uh, racing in America and uh, I always tell ev still everybody that, that when we are talking about uh, the past that uh, my best time in my career was America. Uh, uh, it was a little bit different from uh, Europe but the main reason was the most of the riders were used to ri racing in the desert. So at that, at that time in 1971-72 they it started changing more to motocross a little bit and um, so it, uh, it, I think the motocross uh, 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 people got, got more interested in riding more and more motocross at that time. And uh, the, the desert races went on the background a little bit. It looked like to me anyway. But in Europe it was just motocross and of course enduro riding what we had. And uh, when we came over in the fall series a couple of times, then uh, Americans also saw us as the better riders at that time. But the Americans picked up very, very quickly because you know Americans, they are hungry for victories. I, I had the experience already from racing in Europe and, and winning many races there, international and national. I was three times a Dutch national champion in the 500cc class. And of course, riding races and training a lot, you uh, obtain a lot of experience. <clears throat> and I brought that with me to America in January 1973. So that, uh, that was a good baggage, we call it. Huh? And uh, so um, when I came over, it was, it was uh, tough racing because they were chasing me and, you know. But I, I, I won most of the races at the end of the race, like the last 15 minutes or so, when the conditioning uh, started paying off and uh, at that time the American riders also saw that I was uh, uh, physically very well trained and they started asking me questions and uh, we started promoting motocross schools so everything started growing and growing and growing in the, 70s, in the, the early 70s. At the end of 1973 when, the, when we, we first got our mono bi uh, monoshock bikes from Japan Everybody was just excited in the, in the, in the, at the races and they, they were all around us and yeah, that was a very good move from Yamaha to, uh, to change it so that uh, we could go faster on the bike, of course, and also we had uh, more suspension. So our rear suspension was very good then all of a sudden, but then the front was not so good anymore. So we had to really find the balance in the bike and we did a lot of testing for it and a lot of... Uh, practicing and uh, meetings with uh, all the people from Yamaha, but we got it re pretty good at that time. I chose Yamaha because they seemed to me the nicest people at that time. And uh, I was very fort fortunate to uh, stay with Yamaha. It was a good choice. We were uh, very, very lucky with uh, many good results. And it was not because of me, it was because of the whole team that, did, that worked so hard. I always felt uh, that I was part of the family with Yamaha. When I had a pro proposition for something or if I wanted to change something, they always listened and uh, had meetings about the problem and, and we, we always uh, tried to make the product better. Twenty fourteen AMA Motorcycle Hall of Fame inductee Pierre Carsmakers. In 1972, three-time motocross champion Pierre Karsmakers came to the United States to race motocross. After briefly riding for Kawasaki, he was hired by Yamaha the following season to develop their program. You know, when Pierre came to the United States to race, he really brought a level of professionalism that really upped the training a standard for all the motocross riders in the USA. You know, he came and uh, worked out really hard, and that was his trademark. You know, not only was he a great rider and a good development rider, he brought uh, the strength and uh, determination of a guy who wanted to win. As one of the first Europeans to race in America, he had an immediate impact on the competition and the fans. The stamina, late in a moto, because in those days we ran 40 minutes plus two laps. So his training and his mental toughness is what really gave him a jump start in 73. It was kind of neat when I was a kid, my dad used to take me to some local motocrosses, some of the, the Trans Am, Inter Am stuff and you'd see the Americans rooting for him and stuff like that. And then when Pierre came over, 
he just changed everything. I mean, he raced hard for the whole thing. He, he brought training to a new level and just a lot of skill that he had that our guys didn't have. And it was just amazing when you see our guys think, wow, they're really fast. And then he just at a, was at a completely other level. So that was, was neat to see from a, a kid's point of view of what was possible to do on a dirt bike. Pierre Carsmakers was the first European I, I had ever seen. And uh, he showed up at a local motocross track uh, when I was just getting started. And uh, he was there, I think, with Yamaha doing some testing, and it was like the guy was from another planet. I mean, he wasn't even on the same racetrack as everybody else. It was just, you know, it was like watching Santa race in the rain or something. It was just otherworldly. He was indeed fast. The Flying Dutchman dominated the 1973 AMA 500cc National Motocross Championship, winning 14 of 23 rounds. Of course, I was aware of his, uh, his uh, racing exploits. He was a great rider. He came over here, one of the first Europeans to stay here, and uh, nobody could beat him. He had a lot of tricks that we didn't know about yet, you know, that they, they learned in Europe. And a lot of little corners that he could cut you off and stopped in front of you and accelerated in certain spots where it would screw another guy up, you know. And it did me a little bit until I learned him right away and then did it right back to him, you know. <laughs> Oh, he's one of the top guys, absolutely. He was, he was a lot smarter than most of them because he knew that you had to train. He knew that going in. And he knew your bike had to be handling good for that day. And he, he would worry about tire setup and gearing and that kind of stuff. And a lot of the American guys, they just got on him and rode him. After his stellar 1973 season, he won the Daytona Supercross again in 1974 before injuries prevented him from defending the number one plate. It was said at the time, riding for Honda, that he was the highest paid motocross racer in the world. He would eventually return to race for Yamaha and retired in 1979. Yamaha brought Pierre Carsmakers to the United States for two reasons. One, to win championships, which he did, and to teach the young Americans how to ride, which he did. He was a great rider, but he was also a great communicator, and I enjoyed very much working with him. First time I saw him on the track, uh, you know, the first thought is, boy, I wish he was my rider, <laughs> you know? But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, he was a professional. I mean, one example was in Baldwin, uh, Kansas. I, I saw him a couple months ago and I was joking about it as uh, Pierre crashed and uh, they took his boot off. And the spectators stole his boot. <laughs> so they had to make, at that time, you know, you only got like two pair of boots. So he had to make a big announcement, bring my boot back because he thought his leg was broke. And I can remember in the pits, Ed Schuyler, his mechanic, says, Pierre, how do you feel? And Pierre goes, stamps his feet three, four times and says, prepare my machine, I'll be back next week. So, you know, he was, he was he's a soft-spoken guy, he's a small guy, but uh, he knew he, why he came to America. It wasn't just a sightsee. He came here to win races. For his numerous motocross championships in Europe and the USA, including his pioneering title in AMA Supercross, the AMA Motorcycle Hall of Fame proudly welcomes Pierre Carsmakers.